discover the ultimate guide on how to go to Mars with NASA and SpaceX. Prepare to be blown away by the entire universe of opportunities that await us on the Red Planet. With a collaborative effort between NASA and SpaceX, we embark on a groundbreaking mission of exploration and extraordinary sample collection. Unveiling an exceptional plan to deploy an autonomous space station to Mars orbit, the future shines bright. Imagine an autonomous space station effortlessly orbiting Mars, thanks to NASA's ingenious plan. And not forgetting, SpaceX's awe-inspiring spaceship, the largest and most powerful rocket ever designed. Brace yourself for an exciting future in space exploration as these unstoppable pioneers embark on their unprecedented mission to conquer the uncharted terrain of Mars. Prepare to be astounded as NASA and SpaceX join forces to embark on an awe-inspiring mission to Mars. Brace yourself as SpaceX unveils its massive spaceship, the most invincible and impactful rocket ever created, ready to voyage through the unknown depths of the cosmos. With plans to establish an autonomous space station in Mars orbit, NASA and SpaceX are poised to conquer new frontiers, paving the way for groundbreaking discoveries and potentially groundbreaking sample collection on this enigmatic world. It's time to dive into the thrilling world of extraterrestrial wonders as we embark on an extraordinary adventure to Mars. Explore alongside NASA and SpaceX as they push the boundaries of human potential for interplanetary travel and shed light on the mysteries of Mars. Witness the mind-boggling capabilities of SpaceX's colossal rocket and embark on a surreal journey towards sample collection and understanding the intriguing beauty of the Red Planet. Marvel at the prospects of deploying an autonomous space station to Mars orbit, raising the bar for interstellar achievement. Don't miss this out-of-this-world adventure. Join us as we delve into these pressing questions on today's episode of AB Space. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of my channel. We are going to Mars, people, I mean not you and I, probably not at least, but people will go to Mars because the desire for exploration and adventure is fundamental to the human condition. We are not very good at staying in one place, we never have been. The question that remains unanswered though is just how we're going to get there. Well it's complicated. But there are essentially two paths that we can follow. The old school method, that's NASA, or the new school which is SpaceX. Each option brings a lot to the table and more than likely we are going to need all of the help that we can get because this journey is going to be epic. The first step in the process of reaching Mars is a big one. We have to establish an advanced and permanent presence on the moon. It might not seem like a big difference but going from the moon to Mars will be a lot easier than going from Earth to Mars directly. The Earth's gravity and dense atmosphere make it a nice place to live but these factors also put a hard limit on how much stuff we can launch into space at one time. As NASA establishes their human presence on the moon and in cislunar space, they will be simultaneously expanding their robotic presence on Mars. That means new rovers for sure, but the most exciting prospect for the next 10 years is the large-scale deployment of flying machines on Mars. With the widely successful first test of the Ingenuity drone over the past year, we've now confirmed that we can fly helicopters on Mars. This opens up a whole new potential for exploration and sample collection on the Red Planet. NASA even has a plan to deploy an autonomous space station to Mars orbit, acting as a more permanent way station, not just for missions going to Mars, but also for the return trips. A big part of the next phase of Martian research is going to be sample return missions. That's the essence of NASA's Moon to Mars plan. We establish our foothold on the Moon. We learn how to survive and build in the harsh environment of a lifeless world. At the same time, learn as much as we can about the planet Mars, and we put down a robotic foundation for the first people to arrive. So here's the deal. NASA has a plan to reach Mars with a crewed mission, but they don't have a transport system to get them there. The SLS rocket and Orion capsule system was once thought of as having potential for interplanetary crew transport. But due to cost and difficulties associated with producing the flight hardware, NASA has rolled back their plans for SLS to only servicing Artemis moon missions. SpaceX on the other hand does not have much of a plan when it comes to establishing a presence on Mars. They have some nice digital renders and Elon Musk has said many times that he wants to build a city of 1 million people on the Red Planet, but that's all we have to go on. There are a lot of blanks that still need to be filled in. But one thing that SpaceX does have is one hell of a spaceship, the biggest most powerful rocket ever developed. 
SpaceX has already established the means to build a lot of these rockets at their Starbase factory and they have a proven track record of successfully pushing the boundaries of human spaceflight even if it does take a few failures before they eventually get things. Right. NASA and SpaceX have always worked closely together. SpaceX is currently the only method for American astronauts to reach low Earth orbit from American soil and if everything goes smoothly in the next few years then the Artemis program should represent a massive step forward in the relationship between SpaceX and NASA with astronauts using the Starship as their primary vehicle to land on the moon. So assuming that everything goes according to plan, we are expecting that the first human mission to Mars will require the best of both NASA and SpaceX to accomplish and here is how it's going to go down. Once it gets down into the atmosphere the ship is going to maneuver into a position where it is basically flying sideways with the belly of the rocket catching as much aerodynamic drag as possible it's going to be on a flight path that is essentially running parallel to the surface at a low altitude where the atmosphere is the most dense. And then at the last possible second before the ship crashes into the ground the Raptor engines are going to relight for a final landing burn that will kill off all the excess velocity and bring the ship down for a soft landing on Mars. If the pinnacle technological triumph of the 20th century was landing humanity on the moon, then in the 21st century, the greatest technological feat would be successfully landing humanity on Mars. Elon Musk is famously driven by this vision, asserting that within our lifetime, not only will Mars be colonized, but the groundwork for its inaugural city will commence. When envisioning the Mars dream, minds naturally turn to Elon Musk, the visionary CEO of SpaceX, whose fervent ambition revolves around establishing a city on the Red Planet. This metropolis, designed to sustain itself and accommodate a million inhabitants, marks a pivotal leap toward making humanity a multi-planetary species. Despite extensive discussions about Musk's aspirations, conversations after center on familiar topics like the mechanics of reaching Mars using starship, fuel transfer methods, and landing procedures. Yet little attention has been paid to the specifics of Musk's envisioned Mars base. What would it actually look like and what's the most efficient way for SpaceX to create a sustainable and enduring presence on Mars? In a 2021 white paper submitted for the National Academy's Planetary Science and Astrobiology Decadal Survey, SpaceX outlined its blueprint for the initial Mars mission using Starship. The strategy involves sending uncrewed Starships to Mars serving dual purposes, validating system maturity and readiness, and delivering substantial cargo ahead of human arrival. These missions, likely facilitated by robotics, aim to assess local resources, stage supplies, test long-term operational technologies, and commence infrastructure development, with a propellant plant deemed a critical necessity. Interestingly, SpaceX plans to load even the earliest Mars-bound ships with supplies. Although the cargo may be limited, the initial Martian settlers, launched in groups of 10 to 20 people, alongside 100-plus metric tons or around 220,000 or more pounds of cargo, will repurpose surviving. Starships as pre-established habitats, storage facilities, and raw material sources. Initial cargo shipments prioritize essentials like power, water, and propellant production, alongside the construction of shelters, radiation shielding, and prepared landing pads. As expected, early settlers will likely repurpose the various starships that transported them to Mars as their initial homes on the Red Planet. This innovative approach underscores SpaceX's methodical strategy toward establishing a sustainable presence and paving the way for a human civilization on Mars. However, should events indeed progress in that direction? There exists a divergence of viewpoints on this matter. Some contend that repurposing Starship as a long-term habitat on Mars contradicts its fundamental purpose. The contention arises from the inefficiency created when a reusable transportation system becomes essentially unusable for any other purpose after being established as living quarters. The goal is to maximize the economic efficiency of this pioneering spacecraft. In essence, this viewpoint aligns with SpaceX's overarching philosophy, innovation and progress driven by reusability. This very principle has played a vital role in democratizing access to space, making it more accessible and affordable. So if Starship isn't designated for habitation, what strategies will be employed to establish a base on Mars? What outlines the optimal blueprint for a Martian base camp and its initial setup? To embark on this discussion, the foremost consideration revolves around the location SpaceX should select for landing and operations on Mars. 
the proposition for a Mars base situated in Gale Crater originates from the meticulous deliberations of an international entity, the Space Station Design Studio in Stuttgart, Germany, dedicated to establishing a permanent human presence on the Red Planet. This forward-looking endeavor carefully considers the minute intricacies crucial for the triumph of such a mission. Centering particularly on Gale Crater as the ideal locale for this inaugural Mars base, Gale Crater emerges as a strategic choice for various compelling reasons, prompting the organization's strong efficacy for its selection. Notably, the crater has been under the exhaustive scrutiny of the Curiosity rover, Mars' largest and most capable exploration rover for over a decade, offering a comprehensive and intimate understanding of the region. This familiarity plays a paramount part in mission planning and risk management, as the wealth of data gathered by Curiosity aids in making informed decisions regarding the deployment of infrastructure and allocation of resources. The allure of Gale Crater surpasses data availability, encompassing its geographical placements and climatic characteristics. Positioned at 5.4 degrees south of Mars' equator, the crater experiences relatively moderate temperatures, reducing the energy requirements for maintaining life support systems particularly heating the rationale behind choosing Gale Crater combines comprehensive data, moderate temperatures, potential water reservoirs, and inherent radiation protection, collectively forming an optimal environment for establishing a Mars base. Following this, the Space Station Design Studio proposes a meticulously planned sequence of unmanned missions. This mission's primary objective is to establish a sustainable human presence on Mars while prioritizing astronaut safety. Its key components include an orbiter, ground stations, a Mars ascent vehicle, and inflatable habitats. The deployment sequence involves initiating the orbiter and ground stations, which enter a supersynchronous orbit, facilitating an efficient transfer orbit toward Mars. This positioning is of utmost importance, as once the orbital station, habitat, and cargo are all in place on Mars, the crew can transition to a low-Earth orbit in a deep space habitat. This strategic move sets the stage for subsequent phases of the mission, ensuring optimal conditions for continued operations. The Low Earth Orbit Station, whether a starship or an alternative component, serves as the starting point for astronauts to establish a deep space living environment. Once this assembly phase concludes, they commence the real-time assembly of the Mars-based using TEL robots. Employing an automated system with assembly robots on Mars is a prudent decision, due to the considerable time delay in transmitting commands from Earth to Mars and receiving feedback. Leveraging TEL robots for real-time assembly from Mars orbit streamlines the process by capitalizing on the speed of light for communication. The synchronous orbit station, potentially a starship or replaceable component, plays a critical role in this plan. Its adaptability allows for component replacement whenever necessary. Any potential issues arising during ground station assembly could prompt a return to Earth, given the deployment of the ground station. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date, you can become an exclusive member. So click on our perks through the link in the description below. Thanks to watching and see you next time.